these psalms, these songs, they're prayers that David wrote in all different seasons of his life, whether he be alone as a shepherd in the hills or a fugitive running for his life, hiding in caves or seated enthroned as king of Israel and crowned. Hi, I'm Pastor Audrey, and we're doing a study on the life of David. And part of the study is including uh, a deep dive of the Psalms that David wrote. David is a significant person in the Word of God because he is the most talked about person in scripture um, aside from God himself or Jesus. There's 66 chapters in the Bible on the life of David, and that doesn't even include the 59 or so times that he's mentioned in the New Testament, and then the 73 Psalms he wrote. So out of all of the Psalms, in the book of Psalms, the Psalter, we have about 150 Psalms, and David wrote 73 of those. So we're going to go through those, maybe not all, but as many as we can, and just study these Psalms that David wrote. The fascinating thing about David's life is that he was um, anointed by God himself, chosen by God himself, because God identified that he had a heart after his own. David was born in Bethlehem. He was the eighth son of Jesse, which is significant because when you get to Isaiah, when God is talking about the coming Messiah, he says that the Messiah, Jesus, will come from the root and the offspring of David, or the root of Jesse. So David is not only a significant king that's written about and talked about and a musician that writes so many of these psalms, he's actually the king from which Jesus derives his lineage from. So. When we look at David, his life, we have to identify what he is, who he is. He was first a shepherd, then he was a king. He's a skillful musician. It says that he had prudent speech. Um, and not only was he a man after God's own heart, but he was a mighty warrior. He was valiant. He was a man of war. And all of this I get out of 1 Samuel 16 when um, one of the servants of Saul is describing David to him, that he's handsome. And then most of all, that the presence of the Lord is with David. So when David is chosen an anointed king by Samuel and that oil is poured over his head, it says in the word of God that the Holy Spirit rushed upon him and filled him and remained with him for the rest of his days. So all these songs that he's been writing and he wrote throughout his life are inspired by the Spirit, but they also reveal God to us. So studying the Psalms of David is gonna be fascinating because we look at the life of David, but when you look into the Psalms, you're almost reading his journal. You're realizing how he was processing all of these seasons with God, how he was grappling with God, whether, like I said, he's running for his life or seated enthroned um, over Israel. And this is fascinating because what we can do is we can learn by his demonstration how to interact and pray and talk to God in almost every season you can ever imagine going through. So a few things that we're gonna learn as we go through these Psalms. I have about five things. First of all, we're gonna see that it's okay to be emotionally honest and raw. When you get into the Psalms, you see some of the most crazy, honest, raw um, things coming out, whether it be anger or fear or um, tears, uh, honesty, frustration. It's vital for us to be like that with God, but sometimes we don't feel permission to do so. And you'll realize that the Psalms reveal that the, these ones of the Old Testament, especially David, weren't really approaching God like this distant judge in the heavens. They were talking to him like a father, like a dad. They were trying to provoke him to move on their behalf. So in this, we're gonna learn how to allow our emotions um, bring us closer to God. And then because the Psalms demonstrate how to pray, we're gonna realize how to allow all those emotions to come back into alignment with the truth of who God is and how to be purified in his presence. We also see God in beauty. David's greatest desire was to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord, to see the face of God. You're gonna see this in so many of his Psalms, that his desire, his 
goal, his mission is to gaze upon the beauty of God, to see him face to face, to know as he's known. And so when you look at these Psalms, it's like theology exposed. He exposes the emotions of God's heart, the nature of God's heart, how God feels about sin, how God judges, and the righteousness of God, and how beneficial it is to stand in obedience with the living God. The other thing that's really cool about the Psalms that you'll see is that they don't teach you how to pray by offering a lesson or teach you how to worship and praise by telling you three points for how to do so. It's just demonstration. They, they are actual songs. They're songs that Israel compiled over the generations and created five books and put together and carried as a community and sang and offered thanksgiving and offered praise. And it was their history, but they're a musical community. So when you study the Psalms and you enjoy learning about them, it's essential that you don't just do head knowledge, that you actually pray them yourself. Maybe even if you're a musician, write some music out of them because that's how Israel engaged with God. So it's a demonstration of how to engage with God. It's not a teaching. Hopefully when you read the Psalms, they read you back. You never want to approach the scripture like I'm standing over it and I'm going to figure it out. You want to approach the scripture so that the scripture can analyze you, analyze me. It's like David says, in your light, I see light. So the Psalms study me. They study you. They test our own hearts. And hopefully if you're nourishing yourself, praying the Psalms and engaging in this, you're gonna be transformed in the process. And last of all, it's something we do together as community if we're doing it, if we're being genuine to the culture of Israel, to what David intended. Most of these songs he wrote and then assigned to a lead musician or to a choir, and then the community would sing it in the house of the Lord, and they would sing it together. They would offer thanksgiving, praise, repentance as a community. Sure, you can do it alone in your room in the secret place, but when you do this together, you grow together. And that's, that's the beauty of it. It's a corporate activity. As we go through this, the Psalms of David, I hope that you gain something. I hope that you're transformed. And I hope above all things, that your prayer life and your intimacy with God grows deeper and becomes more raw and more real because he's the kind of father that doesn't want you to hide your emotions, your fears, your confusions, your frustrations from him. But as we'll see through the life of David, he wants us to come and pour our hearts out before him so that he can pour himself into us and strengthen us for the season that we are in.